What's up YouTube, it's Zapdos TCG here and welcome back to the top deck tournament on my channel where the best decks in the standard format face off against each other. In this round we have an interesting matchup here, it's Dark Red Jacks versus Greninja Break. As you know Greninja Break uh, yeah, takes a little bit longer to set up and Dark Red Jacks does have the decent amount of numbers here with an attack that deals 130 damage. So uh, we'll have to see who comes out on top today and uh, if you have not checked the previous videos there's also some interesting matchups between Guard of War GX, Galissapod, Ho Oh GX, Salazzle, and then of course Tapu Bulu GX. So definitely check the videos out. So we do see that Dark Ride GX can start first already an energy on it. There's a Max Legger, a Fighting Fury Belt onto Dark Ride GX, and also a Salandit on the active position. As you know, Dark Ride GX has an, uh, a GX move, Dead End GX, and uh, once uh, the opponent's active Pokemon is uh, affected by special conditions, you can use that attack to automatically one hit KO it. So that's the reasoning behind uh, playing Salazzle. Uh, the one from Guardians Rising in the deck with Darkrai GX. Okay, there's also a Lily on the first turn, I believe. So that is definitely a great start for the Darkrai GX player. Already two energies on Darkrai GX and uh, it makes it impossible to use that uh, yeah, attack on a second turn, which is really dangerous because the Greninja player uh, still has to set up and uh, we'll have to see if he can uh, grab something from the deck here. Maybe uh, first turn volley with Tapu Lele could be awesome since there is a Tapu Lele in this deck. We do see an Ultra Ball here getting rid of Aspion EX and a Water Energy. And uh, now the uh, Greninja player is looking through his deck to see what is priced. And uh, I do believe in this uh, situation there was a Tapu Lele which was priced. Which means we're not going to see a first turn Wally into uh, yeah that uh, Frogadier to use that Dwarder Duplicates. So this will definitely be a, a regular Froki, which is unfortunate because the Darker GX player does have the, the, the greatest setup in the world, being able to hit an attack on the second turn. So uh, if he does not get out another active Pokemon, Greninja might just go down uh, really fast. So we do see another Froki on the bench. And uh, maybe he will have some luck with that uh, Bubble, because as we know, Bubble has the effect of uh, paralyzing the opponent's active Pokemon, which might stall in a situation like this. Should be ideal though. So we do see a Water Energy attached to the uh, active Froki, and then yeah, the Bubble failed, which is uh, unfortunate. So Dark Ride GX, definitely uh, a manual attachment on Dark Ride GX, and uh, we are definitely gonna see that uh, second attack, or actually that first attack of Dark Ride GX. As a side note, a Dark Ride GX also has the ability Restoration, so once a Dark Ride GX hits the discard, you can just grab it back from the discard and bench it onto, uh, un yeah, put it on the bench with a basic Darkness Energy, which could be really great as he, uh, yeah, wants to have some backup here. Once a Dark Ride GX hits the discard, he can uh, just come back from the dead, yeah, and also an N is coming down here, which could be uh, great for the Greninja player if he, uh, has a Frogadier on his second turn, uh, he definitely uh, gets the ball rolling here. And uh, he discarded Espeon EX because it's definitely not needed in a situation like this. Darkrai GX is a big basic which will not go down by uh, devolving. So we do see the end coming down, another Salandit, so he definitely wants to get out his Salazzle once uh, Greninja Break hits the field, that way he can automatically one hit KO it. Also just as a fun fact here, if he has Fighting Fury Belt, and uh, just the damage from the poison and the burn, he will also get 170 damage. So uh, yeah, we did see a knockout on Froki. So the Greninja player only has one Froki in the active position. We see a Guzma, so that means he does not have the perfect hand in the world. And he, he tries to stall out a Salandit. Hopefully the Dark Ride player does not have any needs to get it out of the active position. That is the reasoning behind this. Also we see a Frogadier, which is definitely... Uh, Great, because with that, yeah, we do see the water energy as well. So now we see water duplicates. How many Frogadiers will the Greninja player get out? We already see one, two, and that's it. Oh, wow, that is not good. We do see that there is a Frogadier prize with the Greninja player, which is not great. That's something you don't want to have. There's also a new supporter coming out in uh, Crimson Invasion, I believe, which is called Gladian, which might be a little bit better for this deck just to grab yourself a... Uh, yeah, uh, Frogadier straight from the uh, the prize card. So we do see manual energy on the Salazzle, actually the Salandit. That way he can retreat that uh, and just go back to Dark Ride GX once again to hit for damage. So we also see, yeah, uh, Salazzle uh, coming up here, which means he has that poison and burned, and also a Sycamore. So that was the reasoning behind evolving. Uh, Salazzle also has only one retreat cost, so he can definitely get it out of the, out of the active position. This is really dangerous for the Greninja player since he does have a great board position that uh, Dark Ride GX player. So we do see a manual retreat and then that attack of Dark Ride GX will make quick work of Frogadier. 
So two prize cards already for the Dark Ride GX players. So yeah, well we see yeah, we do see a Green Ninja and that's it. So that means he does not have anything in the hand and he has the most <laughs> terrible luck here. We see uh, we see a Guzma as well and also since there's a Floatstone on Salanda, it does not even matter. He's just keeping that Dark Ride Jax in the active position, retreating into Salanda. Actually, retreating that Salanda and bang, we do see Dark Ride Jax grabbing himself another prize card. So the Greninja player still holding on there. We do see uh, an Ultra Ball here. Definitely is gonna grab uh, something like another Froakie or something. Yeah, another Froakie hits the bench. And uh, Frogadier is still on the active position, so uh, he still is holding on. Maybe if he draws something like an N, but then again, the Darkrai GX player has an Orangugu on the bench. So, uh, yeah, I don't think this first game or will go to uh, Greninja. He's in a, a terrible position here. We do see, yeah, an, a Nest Ball for Darkrai GX. He wants to have some backup here, I believe. Bradley probably gonna attach an energy to that Darkrai. Yeah, there we see him. Energy onto Darkrai GX. So he has some backup, another alternate attacker, and... Yeah, for Greninja is just uh, being wrecked here, which is just unfortunate. Greninja is just a great deck if you can get out everything. So uh, we do see a scoop here, and uh, we're straight going straight to game two. So uh, this time around, the Greninja player will start, which is a huge advantage to get yourself a great board position because Brooklyn Hill can help you out getting yourself a Star You or another Froki. So we are definitely gonna see uh, some more Greninja action this match. Okay, yeah, and there's already a mulligan here, which is uh, not good. The uh, Dark Ride player can get one mulligan here. Hopefully the Greninja player gets a Froakie. If he starts with SP on the X, that would be really terrible. Well, uh, well, let's see how it goes. We see a Froakie and a Staryu, so that is definitely a great start here. This is the Staryu from Evolutions with 60 HP, preventing it from dying with the Flying Flip. So uh, there's also one with Free Retreat. This is the one with 60 HP with one retreat cost yeah the Greninja player can start and what are we gonna see straight from the bat a water energy onto uh, Froki also an ultra ball coming down he's gonna get rid of Wally and a Sycamore and uh, with that ultra ball we're definitely gonna see another Froki because yeah if he uh, sometimes you have that crazy luck where the uh, Darkrai Jax player throws away a Darkrai with an energy and also gets two max legsers up you don't want to see that ever so uh, he's gonna, gonna grab himself another Froki just to be safe on that scenario yeah also check through his deck to see if there were some crucial things priced like maybe a frogadier <laughs> just like last game so the board position is already looking way better than uh, the last one and yeah we did see another sycamore so uh, he threw away sycamore and he used the sycamore so brooklet hill as well he can use brooklet hill but in this situation he's gonna leave uh, three bench spaces open for the possible frogadier so it's to the Dark Ride GX player. We do see Salandit in the active position. He got that mulligan off, and uh, we do see a card which has a lot of glare onto it. I have to uh, see what is in here. Or actually, he's uh, yeah, using the Brooklet Hill. So that uh, card that has a lot of uh, glare to it is Brooklet Hill. And the opponent is just uh, searching through his deck before he's using any card, which is kind of clever. You can always use Brooklet Hill because it's not public knowledge which in your deck. So uh, he jacked through his deck and now he's gonna make, yeah, probable uh, moves here. Maybe he's using Ultra Ball right now or something. Let's see here. Yeah, first some shuffling because yeah, if you use Brooklyn Hill, you have to shuffle the deck and uh, there we go. We do see Altar of the Moon. This is a great stadium card that makes it so he has free retreat on everything that has a darkness energy to it, which could help out. Or actually, uh, yeah, the retreat cost is uh, two less. That is uh, what's being uh, shown here with the Altar of the Moon. We do see N as well, so uh, both players getting a fresh hand of six. Greninja player must love that N because with that he has uh, yeah, better probabilities of drawing into a Frogadier for him to use next turn. So this is a whole different game already. Not the aggressive Darkrai like we've seen in the last game which makes it a longer game, which is awesome in the long run, just because you see both decks in action. All right, do we see Frogadier on turn two? That is the main question that we're gonna have to ask ourselves right here. But first, we also see a Nest Ball coming down after that end from the Dark Ride GX player. We do see Oranguru, still the savior, when uh, you're falling behind in prize cards and you end the opponent, or actually the opponent ends you, you still have a backup with Oranguru. So Landed is still stuck in the active position. Is he gonna retreat into something else or leave it stuck in the active position? Yeah, 
I do think, yeah, uh, he passes the turn, which means uh, it's back to the Greninja player. We do see Froggy there on the second turn. And uh, with that, he's gonna have that water duplicates going on, which is huge. Also an Ultra Ball getting rid of two water energies. Now you might question yourself, why is he getting rid of that many water energies? Well, that is really simple here because he has Starmie in the deck. Starmie has Space Beacon as the ability, which makes it so uh, he can discard a card from the hand and then draw, get two basic energies back from the discard. Really great in decks like Volcanian EX or in this case Greninja Brig. Okay, what is going on here? We're, yeah, we do see a Water Duplicates and there's gonna be one, two, three Frogadiers. Really dangerous for the Dark Ride GX player. This is uh, yeah, a huge turn here where you see the board position of the Greninja player going to whole different levels here. Four Frogadiers, also Staryu and uh, Froki. Wow. Okay, we do see an Ultra Ball here for a Dark Ride GX. Is he able to uh, yeah, get his Dark Ride GX off? What are we gonna see? We do see a manual energy on Dark Ride GX and then Max Elixir as well. Yeah, and he gets the, gra the, the darkness energy, which means he already has two energies on Dark Ride GX. So uh, next turn, if Greninja does some shenanigans, he does have the options to one hit KO it. So we do see a. Uh, I do. I do think that was a Sycamore here. Yeah, Sycamore for seven cards. Dark Ride GX is in the discard with a darkness energy. So restoration coming down, going straight to the bench for backup. And now we see. I do think that was another Max Elixir here. Do we see the hit here? Nope, Max Elixir failed, which was huge, otherwise he would have already grabbed one prize card. So as you see, Darkrai GX is really fast, we don't see it with Darkrai EX in this variant of the deck, but uh, yeah, Darkrai GX packs a wallet here. <laughs> okay. So uh, the Darkrai player is stuck, he cannot attack this turn. What is he gonna do? Leave the Salandon in the active position or retreat into something else? Yeah, he's doubting a lot. Is he gonna retreat? Yeah, he's gonna evolve into Salazzle, which means he has 110 HP. And uh, yeah, we already see burn damage and poison damage onto Frogadier. Already 30 damage on that. Burn does not get away. He flipped tails. And now we're definitely gonna see a Greninja probably. Yeah, Greninja getting rid of the special conditions thanks to the evolution mechanic. And... Yo, also uh, Splash Energy, which is kind of huge because if the Greninja gets knocked out, he can get all the Pokemon back in the hand, which means he can evolve that bench Froge, uh, Froakie and also a bench Frogadier. So Splash Energy, huge here. We also seal 80 damage thanks to that uh, Moonlight Slash getting the wa basic Water Energy to the hand. Yeah, that was great. We also see Dark Red GX on the active position now. And uh, yeah, wow, that Lily was not good at all. But we do see the knockout here. Uh, the Pokemon go back into the hand of the Greninja player and the Darkrai uh, GX player gets a prize card. So we do see, yeah, a one evolution of Frogadier and also into Greninja. The active one also gets an energy Greninja here. And uh, in this situation, he can go for, yeah, we do see Field Blower also for that uh, Altar of the Moon. And then Super Rod getting back some resources. Uh, I do think that was uh, eh, what was in there, a lot of uh, resources to evolve. And in this situation, he can start going for that uh, first attack, Shadow Stitching, which means he cannot rely on abilities, which could be huge, but then again, he all automatically one-shots regardless. So in this situation, I do think we're gonna see a Moonlight Slash for 80 damage, and uh, there's Tapu Lele, wow! Tapu Lele, the secret rare Tapu Lele gets uh, being thrown on the field, and we do see Sycamore. With that Sycamore, we uh, see that the SP on the X goes into the discard. Are we gonna see a Starmie in this situation? More Greninjas. We'll have to wait and see. We see a choice ban, which means Moonlight Slash gets up to 110 damage. Also Evo Soda. And he's gonna grab a Greninja with that Evo Soda. So he has at least backup. Maybe next turn we're gonna see a Greninja break. So definitely see more Greninjas in this match. And then there's Timer Ball. Will the Timer Ball work? He's only running one Timer Ball. Yeah, two hits. How is that even possible? So we do see Starmie and another Greninja. Wow, this was a huge turn for the Greninja player. We do see three Greninjas and a Starmie as well. Wow, I don't think that Dark Red Jack player saw that one coming. And uh, yeah, he can use speed, Space Beacon, but he's not gonna do that just yet. We do see 110 damage, I believe, for that uh, yeah attack. 
getting the energy back in the hand. 110 damage on Darkrai GX. Okay, how is Darkrai GX player is going to respond to that uh, crazy turn of the Greninja player? We do see an energy onto Darkrai GX as backup. Another Salandit on the bench to make it sure that he has that ability to use that and GX. Or maybe, yeah, if he has a Fighting Fury Belt, things will go even more smoothly. Okay, in this situation, he's just gonna go for the knockout. He already uh, knocked something out. And uh, we do see Greninja on the active position. Back to Greninja player. That, uh, yeah, Dark Red Jax does have 70 HP remaining. So we'll definitely have to see a Moonlight Slash in order to get the knockout. We see an Ultra Ball coming down. And there is Greninja Break. That is a scary thing to see here. Greninja Break can snipe 60 damage while using that Moonlight Slash as well. We do see uh, Space Beacon. And uh, we get energies, or actually the Greninja player gets energies back into his uh, hands. And now we are also going to see the Rescue Stretcher for another Greninja. So Greninjas are popping up everywhere. That's how the deck functions. Splash Energy, Rescue Stretcher, Super Rod. They keep on popping back those frogs. Okay, we do see Water Shuriken going down on the bench. Dark Ride GX already getting 60 damage onto that bad boy. And then we also see Sycamore. Bang! A fresh hand of 7. Huge turn once again, so that was two uh, Sycamores in a row for the Greninja player. And in this situation, there's gonna be a Moonlight Slash for 80 damage. Boom! Getting the KO on Darkrai. Okay, getting two prize cards in the process. We do see an energy here, and wow, we do see Salazzle combo. So which means we're definitely gonna see that Dead and GX. Maybe the Greninja player should have stick with Shadow Stitching in order to prevent that KO, but uh, he wanted to go for those two prize cards. And he still has two Greninjas on the, on the bench for backup, so that was the reasoning behind that. And then also an M, which means the Greninja player only gets three cards, while the uh, yeah, Dark Rider player gets, I believe, also three cards, but he does have that Oranguru. Or does he get four, prize four cards? Yeah. Four cards. Okay, this is a kind of a close game, which is always interesting to see here. And yeah, out of that end, does both players get what they want? We also see uh, Restoration coming down, Fighting Fury Bell. So wow, he can uh, he can even one shot with that Fighting Fury Bell without having to resort to his GX move. Wow, who saw that one coming? Fighting Fury Bell gets 10 extra damage. That attack of Dark Knight deals 130 damage, and the between turns from Poison and Burn will get the one hit KO without having to resort to the GX move. So interesting, interesting to say the least. Also another Salandit on the bench, just to get that, uh, yeah, we do, see, oh yeah, we do see that and GX. Was it really necessary? Who knows, but uh, yeah, he gets one prize card in process with that. Okay, what is the Greninja player gonna do now? We do see Skyla. What will Skyla get out of the deck of the Greninja player? The good thing is, the Greninja player does have Starmie at his disposal, so energies will not cause a problem. We do see Evo Soda, thanks to that Skyla. Another Greninja break is in play. The bad news is that that Fighting Fury Belt makes it so that the Dark Ride GX has way too much HP, so the Greninja player cannot one-shot that one. Maybe he's gonna resort to Shadow Stitching, who knows. He's gonna get rid of an Enhanced Hammer, getting energies in the process. There's only one basic water energy in the discard hope, so uh, Starmie did not provide him uh, with a lot of energies. We do see a manual attachment to Greninja. And uh, yeah, I do think what he's gonna do, resort to Shadow Stitching, or is he gonna go for pure damage? He does have another Greninja on the bench. So we do see, is that 60 damage or was that a, yeah, I do think that was a Shadow Stitching. If I saw that correctly. Oh yeah, we do see Water Shuriken as well, 60 damage thrown on there, so uh, the Dark Ride Jax player has 100 damage on him. Or what was that? Oh yeah, no, he's going to resort to something else, that was a Moonlight Slash here. He sniped for some damage as well. And now, maybe he should have resorted to that, uh, yeah, Shadow Stitching, because now we do see Salazzle probably, and... Yeah, we do see Salazzle and he's gonna get his, the KO thanks to that Fighting Fury belt. So that Greninja break will go down. So Shadow Stitching would have been the better play in this situation. But then again, he only needs to snipe once with another Greninja break to get himself the KO on this Darkrai GX. Okay. An energy coming down onto that Darkrai GX on the bench. And what else will happen here? That Fighting Fury Belt is actually kind of huge. We do see Float Floatstone on Oranguru. What is the Greninja player planning? So, uh, 
yeah, he gets the KO here, the uh, Dark Ray Jax player, and now it's back to the Greninja player. Wow, what a close game. We do see Water Energy and an N. Wow, what a huge N. That Dark Ray Jax in the active position will go down this turn. So that is interesting to see. And yeah, the Greninja player will only have to resort to, uh, yeah, only getting one prize card after that uh, Dark Ray Jax hits the discard. Will he get an energy or, uh, or maybe a Greninja break, which would be a huge turn here. We do see three cards out of that end. Does he get another Greninja break in play? That is the main question. So a close game. You, the Greninja player perfectly end that uh, player of the Dark Ride. And we do see Shadow Stitching for the KO, getting two prize cards in process and also blocking off any potential ability. So no restoration, no Oranguru's abilities. And uh, we're gonna, definitely going to see a huge turn here where if he gets the energy, he's going to KO that uh, Greninja. And uh, yeah, we do see... Uh, that was a Sycamore, I believe. So, seven cards in process. And is he going to grab an energy? If he gets the energy, this will be a huge turn. But he does not grab the energy and he's also... Yeah, uh, ability block. So, there's not, nothing he can do in this situation but wait an extra turn. But that turn will cost him a huge deal here because... If he, the Greninja player gets out another Greninja break, I think it's over because with Shadow Stitching, there's nothing the uh, Dark Ride Jax player will be able to do so. Unfortunately, that the Dark Ride Jax player did not draw an energy out of that Sycamore, which was huge. And uh, yeah, I think it's back to the Greninja, Greninja player right now. Okay, we do see Ultra Ball, and we are gonna see the third Greninja break of this matchup, which, yeah, basically screams that the Greninja player has won. If he has a, yeah. He also has a choice ban and he's gonna resort to Shadow Stitching and uh, process with dealing 60 damage as well, which ends up to 130 damage in process. Shadow Stitching with that Moon, uh, or actually with that uh, Giant Water Shuriken, followed up with an N. So uh, first we're gonna see an N. The opponent is N to two cards, while the opponent, or actually the Greninja player, will use Shadow Stitching and the Dark Knight player will be completely stuck. No Oranguru, he has to resort uh, maybe drawing something that he wants, but uh, without using the abilities in this situation. And uh, we, does, we, do, we do see a Rescue Stretcher in the hand of the Greninja player, but he's not gonna use it, so uh, yeah. He just puts them back to the discard, those Pokemon. And this will be a huge deal, Shadow Stitching 70 damage thanks to Choice Band. And the Dark Rider player is stuck, no energy, no abilities, and no supporter. So this will be the end of uh, match number two. And Greninja will, uh, yeah, with a little bit of luck by its side, go to the final round here. We have Dark Ride Jax versus Greninja, round number two. Who is gonna come out on top and go to the semi-finals where he will either face the Metagross deck or Zoroark deck. So, interesting matchup. So, uh, this is round number two. Or actually, round number three. Both players already won one match, which is awesome. And uh, now it's down to the count. The Dark Ride player will start first in this particular situation because he lost the previous match. This is the best two out of three. And if you guys are enjoying the series, definitely show your support by destroying the like button because it always gives me the support, uh, support and uh, motivation to make better content for you guys. So I'm uh, really enjoying the top deck tournament as well, giving commentary, giving you the best decks in the standard format where they face off against each other. So a mulligan once again for the Dark Ride player and he can start as well. So. Uh, Will the Greninja player have a, gr have a great start? Otherwise, this will be in favor of Dark Ride Jax. As we've seen, Dark Ride Jax can make quick work of Greninja break. Okay, we do see a Froki, so uh, this match will go on right now. Okay, the Dark Ride player starts with Tapu Lele, one of the worst starts you can have when uh, you're in a tournament like this. Okay, we do see. I do think. I do think there's an Ultra Ball in the hand as well, so that is at least comfortable to see. Also, Max Elixir, Choice Band. A lot of options are available. Ultra Ball coming down. He gets rid of a Field Blower and a Choice Band, and he's probably gonna grab himself another Tapu Lily, or maybe he can grab something else. Maybe a Dark Ride using Sycamore could also happen. He's gonna search through his deck. And uh, yeah, he grabs himself a Darkrai GX. He's probably gonna get rid of him with a Sycamore. He's going for the speedy method here. Yeah. There's also Max Elixir that will not work in this situation. Or actually he's gonna, yeah, just, just banish the Darkrai GX. Using Max Elixir, getting an energy onto Darkrai GX. 
and that will be the first energy out of the bunch if he gets three energies the green ninja player will be in kind of uh yeah some trouble some situations where the dark rise just one shot the green ninjas turn after turn are we also gonna see a supporter this turn so this is a uh, lily i believe grabbing himself some cards while uh yeah, not giving a manual energy, or actually man the energy of the turn to Dark Ride Jax. We also see Oranguru once again. Now it's to the Green Ninja player. We see Brooklyn Hill, which means he can search through his deck, find himself another Froki to be in a comfortable position, and get him started right now. Okay, we do see Froki. Froki number two. What else are we gonna see in this matchup? So. This will be down for the count. Who will go to the semifinals? It's uh, yeah, a close game. Darkrai has the advantage of one-shotting. Greninja has the advantage of uh, only giving up one prize card. So yeah, it's a 50-50 matchup. Unless the Greninja player times his shadow stitchings perfectly. Because without the abilities of the Darkrai player, he will not be able to one-shot a Dark or actually a Greninja break. Okay, we do see Sycamore. There's a huge deal in there. There's Starmie in there. So if he cannot get out the Starmie, he will not be able to recover energies. Wow. Okay, an Ultra Ball coming down. We do see a discard of a Brooklyn Hill and a manual energy of a basic water energy. And what is he gonna grab out of that Ultra Ball? We do see Staryu as well. So that can only mean one thing. He has a Rescue Stretcher in the hand. Or uh, he knows that there is Rescue Stretchers in his deck. There's two uh, reasonings behind that. Two Frokies, one Staryu, and a bubble that does not land successfully, so those bubbles don't go as planned at all. We do see an energy on Dark Ride Jack, so if you can grab a Floatstone or uh, get that Tapu Lele out of the active position, or yeah, a Gosma, bang, we are uh, gonna see he's targeting this Staryu, which means he knows that uh, the uh, Staryu is a big deal in this matchup, and uh, there's a Rescue Stretcher already, he's gonna put uh, Greninja back, Staryu and Starmie back into the deck and with Brooklyn Hill he automatically grabs himself the Staryu so that knockout on Staryu was uh, yeah not practical at all it, com it comes back out of nowhere and there's probably gonna be yeah a manual energy on to yeah he's doubting here he's just gonna use that uh, water duplicate grabbing himself some Frogadiers how many Frogadiers is there a Frogadier price that is what you have to ask yourself yeah, we do only see two Frogadiers on the bench, which means there is one Fro Frogadier prize, just like in game number one. But at least he has a, a better board position. So this will be a, kind of a close game. We do see Nesball, probably gonna grab himself as a landed in order to get himself the opportunity to one shot with that and GX. And that uh, Dark Ride GX will have the first KO of the match here. Or actually the second KO. Staryu was already seeing uh, some uh, situational things here. Yeah, Dark Ride GX player is dying. Searching through the discard of the Greninja player. And what are we gonna see? We do see Fighting Fury Bell. This is a huge card that uh, helped the Dark Ride player a lot in game number two. And... Uh, yeah, this will be an N. So uh, with that N, both players get a fresh hand, while the Dark Knight player only gets 5 cards, the Greninja player gets 6 cards. And getting 6 cards while there are some Frogadiers on the field is kind of huge. We're definitely gonna see a Greninja next turn. And... Yeah, I do think this... Uh, there's gonna be a knockout right now on the active Frogadier. Still uh, looking through his options here, looking through the discard, what is he gonna do? I don't see a backup here, is there gonna be a restoration? There's no Dark Ride GX in the discard as of yet. So uh, he's gonna go, go for a manual energy on Tapu Lele and get the KO on Frogadier. Okay, so we do see Greninja straight from the bat, also uh, yeah, what is gonna happen now? He's gonna get, get a manual energy or is he gonna do something else? We do see an Ultra Ball. He's gonna get rid of... Yeah, just gonna search his discard. Ultra Ball getting rid of a Water Energy and a Greninja Break, I believe. And he's gonna grab himself Starmie. Or, yeah. 
that Starmie is kind of huge. We do see uh, an energy onto that uh, Greninja. And that will uh, be a huge deal here. If he uh, is able to do maybe a shadow stitching early game. And uh, he's already uh, here because that last card in the hand is definitely a Sycamore. So, yeah. He's gonna grab that. Bang. Sycamore high-fiving just because he has zero cards in the hand. He's just empty his hand. And using his fresh hand, seven sycamore, fresh hand of seven with a sycamore is huge. And that Greninja, yeah, there's already two Greninjas. So uh, things go, uh, that escalated quickly. <laughs> or what we're gonna see here is an Ultra Ball, getting rid of Ultra Ball and Timer Ball. And we do see Froga there. So uh, he's gonna grab himself that. Bang. So things are heating up. And uh, we're definitely gonna see, yeah, 110 damage onto that Darkrai GX. So Field Blower once again getting rid of a Choice Band. And yeah, we're definitely gonna see a KO here. We don't see backup just yet. Ultra Ball getting rid of an Energy at Super Rod. This is gonna grab himself. I do think that was a Tapu Lily. So maybe the uh, Greninja player should have resorted to Shadow Stitching. But that's uh, not the case here. We do see Tapu Lele for a Sycamore. And that Sycamore will grab himself a huge chunk of cards. Also getting rid of an energy here. Seven cards. Bang. So this is a close game. Greninja player uh, still needs to take some prize cards. But uh, at least he has a great board position where he has Starmie and another Greninja to, as the backup. Oh wow, so uh, yeah, we do see Salazzle. Is he gonna use the Salazzle or is he gonna wait until a break pops up? We do see Restoration as well, so uh, the Dark Ride Jacks on the bench already getting an energy. Manual energy onto Dark Ride Jacks, so the backup is real. Yes, or actually that was a Max Lexer. <laughs> okay, lots of Dark Ride Jacks is on the field. And boom, Greninja goes down once again. So uh, already three prize cards uh, took taken from uh, the Dark Ride GX player, which is great. Now Greninja Break is on the field. Also Water Energy and a Sycamore once again. So that Sycamore is uh, definitely more than welcome here. Are we gonna see another Greninja? Are we gonna see a Giant Water Shuriken? So we do see Froki. And uh, he's checking the discard. What is in the discard that can help him out? Is he able to get another rescue stretcher going on? We'll have to wait and see. So uh, water energy is definitely in the hand. He is able to just use 60 damage. Then that uh, the Dark Ride Jax is at 170 damage. And then just with a shadow stitching, he is uh, able to uh, yeah, overcome the next turn. So we do see 60 damage with Giant Water Shuriken on the active Dark Ride Jax. And then sh shadow stitching, getting himself two prize cards and uh, the ability lock as well. In a situation like this, he is not able to one-shot that Greninja break. Because abilities are locked down, so Lazzle cannot be used at all. So an energy, manual energy onto Darkrai GX. And uh, as you see, uh, that uh, Shadow Stitching makes it sure that Darkrai GX cannot use Restoration to come back out of nowhere. Which was uh, kind of a huge deal here. Shadow Stitching will be an MVP attack in this game. So we do see a retreat here with Guzma. And boom, Greninja is in the discard. So already... He only ha take, has to take two more prize cards. So if he has some more Guzmas, this will be a great game for Darkrai GX. And he will go to the semifinals. We do see uh, yeah, some shenanigans on the uh, Greninja break player. We see an N. Wow, what a huge N. The opponent will only get two cards while the Greninja player gets uh, yeah, four cards, which is respectable. And he also gets energies back with Starmie. Wow, what a huge turn. Oranguru is shut down, Tapu Lele is shut down. What is the Dark Ride GX player able to do when a Shadow Stitching hits him? So uh, we do see Space Beacon getting rid of Espeon EX and he grabs some energies from the discard, which is such a great ability to use here. We have a water, Giant Water Shuriken coming down on that Dark Ride GX and then Shadow Stitching making it sure that he has the two hit KO next turn and uh, he is in an ability block. He can deal 130 damage, but uh, Without uh, the backup with Restoration, there's nothing the Dark Ride GX player can do. Oranguru is useless as well. He just slaps down another Salanda just so he doesn't draw into it with another N. 
that might come down and uh, I do think 130 damage is the only thing he can do in a situation like this. He's in a scary position where he does not have backup once that Dark Light Jax hits the discard and with a potential KO with a Shadow Stitching in process, I do think Dark Light Jax has, does not have the means to get back out of that, out of that one. We do see Max Elixir for nothing at all, which is not good, so no backup. But he does have an energy on Tapu Lele, so maybe he can just get, grab himself a KO onto that a little Fropia or something else. Okay, we see another Greninja on the Greninja player bench, and uh, I do think this will be the game where he has just a Shadow Stitching and another Giant Water Shuriken. So Giant Water Shuriken, 60 damage on Dark Ride GX, and he's gonna retreat into this Greninja. He's gonna give him Splash Energy, and then he's going to go for the Shadow Stitching. So. Uh, He's gonna preserve his Greninja break, which is great if uh, that one gets knocked out by Tapu Lele. Yeah, this will be uh, a situation where he scoops. He knows this is the end and that uh, Greninja goes to the semi-final. So thanks again for watching this video.